Welcome to today's Advent Cast. This is Father John Zulsdorf. Every person is a precious mystery. An individual cannot be weighed by public opinion. He cannot be measured by his conditionings. He belongs to no one but himself, and no creature in all the world can penetrate his mystery except the God who made him. The dignity of every person is beyond our reckoning. Fulton Sheen From Peter Kwasniewski's Noble Beauty, Transcendent Holiness. A friend and I were talking about the difference between sight in the liturgy and sound. If a liturgy looks silly, as it invariably does when the priest is facing the people but addressing God, one can always close one's eyes and retreat into the interior castle, or at least make the attempt. But if there is endless blather and or loud muzak, one cannot close one's ears, and it would be rude to plug them with one's fingers or to reach for the wax earplugs. Put simply, the sound of the liturgy is more unavoidable and more determinative than the sight of it. The modern liturgy is more or less designed to be a non-stop talkie from start to finish. Either the priest is talking, or the lectors are talking, or the people are making responses or songs are being sung. There is nary a moment to absorb what has been uttered, to reflect on what has been sung, or to prepare for the next step, whatever it might be. One feels like the unfortunate pupil of an overbearing governess, who never stops lecturing him about how he must tie his shoes, wash his face, do his long division, and write in his copybook with a regular cursive. Let's face it. A recited vernacular mass with the priest going on and on and on in a rambling monotone can have a soul-deadening effect. Because everything is said aloud and facing the people, it is the opposite of the traditional low mass, which is said quietly and facing the Lord. Because there is so little singing and so little silence, it is also the opposite of a traditional high mass. At the Novus Ordo neither high nor low mass, one drowns in an ocean of dull verbiage. No wonder the church is dying in the Western world. How could it survive such waves of boredom, worse in their own way than any iconoclasm? The words of St. John Climacus are eerily applicable to many celebrations of the Novus Ordo. Talkativeness is the throne of vainglory, on which it loves to show itself and make a display. Talkativeness is a sign of ignorance, a door to slander, a guide to jesting, a servant of falsehood, the ruin of compunction, a creator of despondency, a precursor of sleep, the dissipation of recollection, the abolition of watchfulness, the cooling of ardor, the darkening of prayer. Young Catholics who are serious about their faith crave the silence and spaciousness of the traditional liturgy, the way it moves slowly, breathes, opens out, respects and demands one's own prayer, made in one's own way and at one's own pace. It is so liberating to attend a Mass where the focus is somewhere else beyond, and you can catch up as you can without being addressed or cajoled. It is merciful to our weakness and yet plays to our strengths. Priests who must celebrate the ordinary form should do everything they can to avoid this death by verbosity. They should pray the Roman canon sotto voce, so that it is barely audible and preserves its dignity rather than being announced like the daily news so that it loses its sacrality. They should chant as much of the Mass as they can and see to it that the choir or scola chants the ordinary and the propers. They should protect and promote liturgical silence. Only in these ways can the ordinary form avoid being a form of torture to the ears of body and soul.